I really have to smile because I'm alive. I have the privilege and the honor, the opportunity uh, to reach out and speak into people's hearts around the world. I think the furthest we have reached is uh, West Virginia and San Bernardino, California. I'd like to hear from someone in Northern Ireland, Southern Ireland, Australia, South America. The reason I am in awe uh, of the technology that allows me to present myself before you, give you an opportunity to reject me, to have the privilege, the honor of considering um, a creator who came to this earth and saw the potential of this earth, spoke it in reality into existence. And his son, Jesus, the Savior, the Redeemer, the Lamb of God. And so, I have the day off, it's October 8th, uh, 2021. I, I truly enjoy work, but I truly love doing this because I know that if you give someone a fish, it's not nearly as good it's good. It's not nearly as good as teaching that person how to fish and thus have an ongoing source of sustenance uh, for tomorrow and the day after and the day after. And that's what I'm doing. That's what I, I know God is doing through me. I uh, cherish this day because if you're willing, my God will make a difference in your life. If you are willing, He, the Creator, the one who is the author of what I call intelligent design. That's when this earth is all about intelligent design. Premised, motivated, based upon love. That's what God and his son and the Holy Spirit are all about love. What does love have to do with it? Everything. Some several years ago, I uh, was attending a rather large church in Calgary. And uh, it was a singles group. Uh, there were about 400 people that, uh, if they all came at the same time, would be there. They didn't come at the same time. Usually there was a hundred, perhaps 150. And um, the one preacher, he was kind of in charge of everything. And he said, Jim, uh, uh, I'd like you to join the uh, praise and worship group. And I thought, you haven't stood near me when I've been trying to sing. I said, I can't sing. He said, I, I don't want you to join the praise and worship group because you can sing. He said, I want you to lead it. 
And I said, why would you have anyone lead the praise and worship group who can't sing? I can't. But God's not done with me yet. In our family, I, I have members of my family who can sing. And uh, they write. It's mostly country. But country's real. Country music is real. Sure, your truck broke down, and your mama got run over by a train, and your dog died, and the love of your life wandered off with someone else. <laughs> it's still real. Some people walk in that. I'd rather walk in um, in love. I don't think there's anything more important in this life than to love and be loved, to care. Part of my caring came a little bit obvious uh, several years ago, I think about 97. Think about this, children. We have uh, done 50 videos so far, um, mostly from the 80s. Um, I have the 70s yet to go. Uh, I'm getting a good start on the 90s. And uh, the time when my old Dodge was built, that was in uh, zero 01. So listen, when I say we have a hundred, perhaps more, perhaps twice that many videos that are based on true truth, uh, based on life's experiences. We do Christmas, um, about 97. Um, I was <laughs> leading the praise and worship at this rather large church for this rather small group compared to the church. I think there were 7,000 people that attended that church, uh, spread over about five services. Uh, one of the best preachers in the world. And uh, what he said you could listen to, what he said I understood. I learned, and um, Christmas, and uh, a week perhaps before Christmas took place, I was leading the praise and worship, and, and I, I, I asked the people, I said, how many of you don't have a place to go for Christmas? 27 people put their hands up. One was a young girl, a lady. Uh, she wasn't even 30 yet, I don't think. And uh, she was with our group and we were all uh, 50 plus maybe. Yeah, actually. Well, I was about 40, eight or nine. And uh, I'd wandered into that church because I needed some place where I could sit and absorb wisdom from God. I didn't have to talk. I didn't have to be the focal point of attention. I had to be sitting there before my God and letting my heart heal. It had been injured pretty hard and uh, it was gonna get injured again and I, I needed that time, that solace, uh, to, to recover. So I said to the 27 people, listen, uh, I'd, I'd sure uh, appreciate it if you 
were to come to my place for Christmas. I lived alone, nice house, uh, country hills, uh, three bedroom, all that little garage. And I said, uh, you're, you're cordially, cordially or cordially invited. Hey, you're invited for Christmas dinner. And they all accepted. And um, so I went to work. I cook. Well, I talk too. You may have noticed that. Um, but I do cook. And the reason I cook is because it is a, a tangible way in which I can tell people, I notice you. I see you standing there. I can see into your heart a little. God will only show me a little. He does not show me what you've been through. He shows me the hurt of what you've been through in your heart. He, uh, he will never show me more than he wants me to see, nor more than you are willing to allow me to see. He is not a respecter of persons, but he does honor, and he knows what honor is, and uh, I do too. I get this arm moved over a bit. Anyways, I went and bought three turkeys, and uh, a couple of days before Christmas, two days before Christmas, I got busy cooking. And uh, I cooked three turkeys, and uh, I, uh, I made a meal, children. Uh, Christmas pudding. I'm telling you, this old boy knows how to cook. And I'm not old yet. That day, Christmas Day came, and everybody started to come. I was ready. No use uh, getting ready to dance if you haven't been practicing how to do it. And um, everybody came in the front door, 27. Kind of filled the living room and the kitchen, which kind of open, very nice, uh, two-year-old house. Um, yeah. But they all hesitated. Uh, like I, I'd open the door, welcome them, and take the coats and hang them up. And I noticed that everyone stopped, right, and looked at a picture. I I showed that picture on the uh, last video. It was uh, me wrestling a uh, black bear at the sportsman show. And uh, after all, everybody got in the house, I said, why are you all... Um, looking at that picture. Well, they said, you told us you wrestled a bear, but we didn't think anyone's that stupid to wrestle a bear, so we didn't think you had done it. And I thought, I said it. Why in the world would you question whether I had done it? But anyways, they saw the picture, and and we had a good day. My, my son... Uh, and his, his wife of the day, uh, she's since wandered off. And uh, our three boys, uh, one uh, that was from a marriage before with someone else. And then my son came along and fell in love with her. And, and uh, he, he fathered two more sons. So I have... Uh, uh, four uh, genetic grandsons and two uh, that uh, were in previous relationships. That's life. That's the way it is. It doesn't matter. They're still my grandchildren. I love them. I won't mention their names. It's not right. And um, we had a, a good Christmas dinner and I got to visit my grandkids for 10, 15 minutes and 
and uh, then they left, and then I I I got busy uh, talking about my God. And I didn't say a word. I didn't have to. A lot of times people don't understand. You don't have to say anything. You have to be what you would talk about. I go to work. I don't have to tell people I'm a Christian because I don't want to call myself a Christian anymore. I want to call myself a man who chooses to believe in a creator. The word Christian has uh, gone through a lot of stuff and uh, I don't want to be, and, and I'm sure Christians don't want anyone to know that I, uh, I believe the same things as they do, uh, that God brought his son to earth, born of a woman, so that he could live a perfect life as we can't. And that perfect life would allow us to accept his life in lieu, L-I-E-U, lieu of our inability to live a, a life good enough to merit salvation. We can't. There's no way we can. No way I can, I guarantee you. But in that Jesus did, he did live this life perfectly. We can humble ourselves and pray and say, God, forgive us. I accept that Jesus Christ is your son, that he was born of a virgin. God did not have sexual interaction with that virgin whose name was Mary. The Holy Spirit hovered uh, um, over her. That does not have any sexual connotation to it. Grow up, children. Don't be stupid. Don't mess with God. Not me. Who? Hey, who am I? But don't mess with God. Well, you can, but it will be to your detriment. God says vengeance is mine. He's not kidding. God says that he loves us. He's not kidding. Jesus, there is a, there is a, a wonderful little story that I did about a mine somewhere working for a company by some name with a super with some name that I don't mention. And it was about uh, working in that mine and asking God, would you give me the privilege, the honor of praying for my crew of touching their hearts, of giving the plan of salvation over the radio. It's not allowed. And uh, God said he would, and he did. And um, that, that super, he uh, was used by God for that moment in time. And I, I have great confidence that God's going to work in that man's heart because that man uh, has some work that needs to be done. And he knows it. And I am, am confident that he watches my videos. You see, doing the right thing is very important. When you choose 
to ignore the right thing and you choose to live a life that is just getting by. You cheat yourself out of a lot. You lose the honor and the opportunity to humble yourself and pray. You can still do it, and God will still hear, but don't kid yourself. There is a price. You're going to pay it unless you ask God to forgive you. And if you ask God to forgive you, then you better bear some responsibilities. Not that you can earn salvation, but then not merit it, but rather show your appreciation to God by at least trying to do the right thing. So, consider this, God loves you. Jesus Christ, his son, born of a virgin, living a perfect life so that his life would be worthy of being sacrificed, the shedding of his blood to cover your sin. Trust me, children, we all sin. We all have sinned. We're all going to sin. There's no one perfect, just Jesus. That wonderful man on the shovel, Grows Nest Pass, coal mine. I backed up to him. I just talked about a safety issue. I just had thanked them, the whole crew, individually, for allowing me the privilege of working with them and learning how to run truck properly. And I backed up and I said, I don't think I did a perfect job there, brother. And he said, uh, Jim, been a long time since anyone was here who was perfect. We both know, he said, that he was perfect. We both know who I'm talking about, that sort of thing. Well, that was about Jesus. Well, I'm not Jesus. Neither are you. But I tell you this, I care. I care about you. I care about people who live on the street. Uh, a little lady, I thought she was a girl, but she is no girl. I saw her, I commented to, to that super. He was driving my truck, his lady was in the front seat, I was in the back. I said, that woman there looks like she's been ridden hard and put up wet. What that meant was, it's like a horse. A horse is ridden hard, they sweat. They need to be brushed down. I, my God started to deal with me when I said that. And he was not being gentle. He shouldn't have been gentle. I had spoken about one of his creation. So I told that guy who was driving, I said, uh, I need you to take me back to that gas station where we saw that lady. He said, Jim, don't go down this rabbit trail. I said, uh, I have to. When it comes time that, as a believer in God, the people who are telling you how to live 
don't seem to have a relationship with the Creator. They don't even talk about Him. They use His name in vain. Uh, you, you better make sure who you're listening to. Anyways, it was my truck. I told him, take me back. We drove around the gas station. I saw the lady talking to a man over at a pickup truck and I put my gloves on. I put uh, my heavy denim coat on and uh, I, I snugged my gloves up hard. He said, Jim, don't do this. I said, I, I have to do this. And I got out and I walked over to the front of that pickup truck and I think they were discussing business. And I stared at that man and he put her in reverse and backed up and that lady, she must have been 50. I, I, I hadn't thought so when I first saw her, but I thought, lady, you've had a rough life. And uh, I wanted to know how much she charged for her time and how much time that was, she told me. I, I took the money out of my wallet and I handed it to her. And I said, I want to talk to you about God. She, she said, really? I said, yes. So I, I spent that, I think it was only 20 minutes, which meant she made 60 bucks an hour. Um, imagine being in a position in a place where the only way you can figure you can survive would be by allowing someone to use your body. I don't judge that lady. I did that day by her looks and I, I was ashamed. I'm not judging anyone over anything anymore. I, uh, I, I met the most beautiful woman in the world. And uh, I don't know where she'd been. I don't know what she had done. Not my place to even wonder about it. Because you, you live your life. I'm trying to live mine. I care a bit, you know I care a bit. I, uh, I didn't fall in love with that lady's history. I don't know it. I didn't know it. I don't know it now, and I don't want to know. I didn't fall in love with a whole lot of understanding of who and what she was. I still don't know. It's not my place. I shared the reality with that lady who uh, I had spoken wrongly of. And uh, I never, I never stopped watching to see if, if, uh, if there was a, a pimp walking toward me and I was ready to fight because what I was doing was what God called me to do and that was to talk to the lady to tell her there is hope you just turn and your eyes upon Jesus look full in this glorious wonderful face and the things of this earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace.
me. Sorry. You're gonna live till you die. Figure out what that means to you. You don't learn to hear God, to know scripture, to love. You're going to get off the trail. Don't children say the strangest things? Yeah. Wounded, broken children grow up. They become adults. But within their bodies, within their persons, is that little tiny baby. Usually it's women. Sometimes it can be men who have been used and abused. But in my mind's eye, I see a, a black-haired uh, woman sitting in the corner of a room. I won't ever get tired of saying this. I hope you don't ever get tired of hearing this. If you do, you want to repent. If I do, I will repent. And that woman is sitting, her knees drawn up, almost fetal position, sitting forearms on her knees, forehead resting, long black hair hanging down, tears, sobbing. I've said it before, i say it again. That can well happen with that same woman standing up trying to pretend that everything is all right, trying to survive, trying to make it through the day. Tears, yeah, they don't always flow down the outside. Quite often they're on the inside. Brokenness, actually that's to be cherished because in your brokenness, you can look away from the mirror that you're looking into that shows your reflection. And you can look at God, to God, to Jesus, through the Holy Spirit. You can ask the question of God, is there any hope for me? And there is. There is hope for you. While yet you are breathing, there is hope. You can change your ways. God can enable you to change your ways. You won't ever earn salvation. You will be able to live your life. Thankfully, prayerfully, and in a certain methodology. Sorry. You can say thank you to God for the gift of life, for the gift of love. You may not have experienced love. Trust me, you study Jesus, God. You study scripture, you'll learn what love is. My prayer is that you will also learn what I learned at 71 years of age, what it means to truly be in love with God yes but I've known that for a long time but I didn't understand it but also in love with uh, God's choice for your your partner life's partner life's partner seem to come and go not necessary so God bless you.
hey, remember this. A little prayer. It doesn't matter about the words. It matters about your heart. God forgive me. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I believe that he took my sins upon himself, suffered, bled, and died on the cross that I might choose to live through him. God, I'm sorry. Help me to be what you want me to be. Children, uh, you're alive. While you're alive, you can choose where you're going to spend eternity. Give God a try. Not religion, not church, not denomination. But give God a try. Look upon His Son who suffered, bled, and died for you. This Christmas it is my prayer then you will have someone to spend it with. This is but October. But I mean, hey. Think about this. Think about God. And you have a good day and I'm going to uh, reach over and, and move this little hand of mine and uh, you consider consider God um, on YouTube or something look up the song uh, it's called In the Garden it says he walks with me and talks with me and tells me I am his own the things we share as we tarry there none other has ever known Get to know my God, His Son, His Holy Spirit, whose purpose is but to reveal Jesus Christ to us, God's Word. God bless. God bless, say. God bless.